Hey guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about how to use Memcached in your Rails application to power the um, caching behind the scenes. So Memcached is a service you'll install on your computer, your server, and it will run on a port and you can set it up on multiple servers and create a cluster of caching servers. And uh, what it will do is basically accept a key and a value and you can retrieve the key to get the value back. Um, and it does exactly that. It is a um, key value store similar to Redis. We will talk more about that in a little bit. Um, but this is really easy to set up, install, and get running and you are off to the races. Rails comes with the memcache store, which you can set up. So you can define config cache store, memcache store, and your uh, list of servers. So this could be IP addresses, host names, uh, you know, DNS names like this. Uh, and it will also fall back to um, the one local host if you don't have the um, memcache servers environment variable set. So memcache servers is an environment variable to look for out of the box. It's the standard name for this. And that way you can provide that uh, with your hosting provider and it will be dynamic and you can change that without having to deploy a new um, copy of your code. So this is all you really have to do except for installing the Dolly gem. So let's go ahead and create a real simple Rails application. Um, we'll say cacheable and Rails will generate our app. We'll go into that, we'll add the Dolly gem and add our configuration for memcache store, and we'll take a look at that. Now, one of the questions you might have, uh, why would I use memcache instead of Redis? Well, uh, if you use Redis, you can actually configure it to work just like memcache, and a lot of advice online says, just use Redis these days instead of memcached. Um, it does a lot more, it has a lot more functionality, uh, and it's just generally uh, more useful. And it's basically the same performance, if not a little bit more. Um, and so the advice is basically that. But there's an important caveat there that memcached is designed purely for caching. So it will expire old keys that haven't been used for a long time. You can configure Redis to do that, but if you're using Redis for other things, like sidekick jobs, rescue jobs, um, anything like that, you do not want that configuration enabled because you would add a job and if it doesn't get to it in time, um, it could just delete the job from the database when the memory usage is full. And so that would be very bad. So sometimes if you are going to um, be doing this, it might be fine up until a busy day in production, you would run into some serious problems later on that would be very hard to figure out. And that's why if you're gonna use a Redis, you want to probably have two different Redis databases. One for uh, permanent storage that your sidekick jobs would run on, and then a separate caching version that's configured just for caching if you were to use Redis. But it's easy enough just to spin up memcached uh, or memcached and have it already configured and you don't have to do much for that. So it's you know just an option that's available. A lot of older um, clusters and stuff will have memcached on there and it works great. So let's go into our cacheable Rails application here. We're gonna run bundle add dolly. Cat's having fun back there. Um, so the dolly gem will get installed and then we can dig in to um, adding our configuration here. And I'm just gonna use the um, copy of uh, memcache that we already have. So I've used brew install memcache D and once that's done, you can, you'll can you see the info printed out here. Um, so we can run brew services start memcache D to start it up and we can run it manually if we would like to put it like in a proc file or something. Um, so there's that. You can run it with Docker, of course, um, whatever else you might want. I've got it running and we've got our Rails application here. So we can jump into Vim. We can go into config initializers uh, or config environments RB. And we'll just put this as a oh, environment.rb or application. That's what I'm thinking of. It's so a Monday morning. Um, so here we go. We'll say config dot cache store equals mem, I believe it's mem underscore cache underscore store. Yes. Okay, so we're just gonna use this very simple version. And if 
it's helpful. We'll put this uh, comment there as well, just so that we know, you know, this is going to read from that environment variable when we're in production. Otherwise, it's going to check our local host. And 11.2.11 is the port that it runs on by default. So now we need a little way of testing this. So we can generate a controller. Let's call it main uh, with an index. And we'll set our Rails root to that, uh, Rails G controller. We can go into our routes file and set root to main index. And then in our main index file here, we can use the cache. So with the Rails cache, we would say cache and a key name. Um, maybe we'll say current time do. And we can have uh, time.current as the value that uh, we write. Uh, so if there is nothing in the cache yet, It'll call the block, it'll uh, return the current time, then next time we load it, it will check the cache, and it will see, oh, there was a time that was uh, written there, so we'll return that, and that will be good to go. So let's boot up our Rails app, actually. So we'll say Rails S, wait for that to boot up, go to localhost 3000, and we'll see the current time here on January 16th, 2023, and if we refresh the page, um, we're going to see that this time is actually updating. So it's not actually caching properly to our um, memcache store. Why is that? Well, Rails in development um, does not actually cache by default. So if you go into the development environment.rb file, you'll see this section here. And it says, um, hey, if the temp caching-dev.txt file exists, then we are going to perform caching. We're going to enable fragment cache logging, and it's also going to set the uh, cache store to the memory store. So we want to comment this out in order to use that memcache store that we set in the application RB, which all of the environments inherit from. So that's like a good default to have. And uh, if this file does not exist, caching is turned off. So that's why we're seeing this where it doesn't appear to be caching because it's not caching, it is not enabled. So what we can do is we can run this rails dev cache command um, in our terminal in development and that will just write that file, print out this message. If we restart our rails server, it will load the configuration again and we'll see now, okay, it wrote 447 to the terminal uh, or to the display, but it also wrote the fragment to memcached. And what you'll see here is it reads the fragment first because it needs to check to see, hey, is this cached yet? It says, no, there's nothing here. So it writes the fragment and then it continues on rendering our view. So then Dolly server, you can see here, is connected to 127001 uh, on port 11. 211, and that is the default, like we saw in the comments. And now if you refresh this page again, it will say the exact same time. We can refresh it as many times as we want. It will be cached uh, until that is expired from the memcached um, database. So here we can see read fragment now, and we don't see any more write fragments because this fragment is now cached in memcached and uh, it finds it when it looks it up and then it just uses that when it renders out the page. Now we can do, of course, the other functionality um, that's documented here. So if you want to do expirations and things like that, I think under uh, fragment caching or something like that, we'll find um, some of this stuff. But there's some cool options like cache if. You have an admin user, always render the latest version of the product. It'll be a little slower, but um, you know, the admins will always have up-to-date information and not the cached version, which is a good example there. Um, yeah, cache stores like memcached D will automatically delete old cache files. So it's important uh, just to keep that in mind with this. Um, it will make sure that everything that is cached can be cached, and then if you overflow, it will automatically take care of that and not allow you to overflow. But some of those older things will no longer be cached which is okay. Um, so we can have the expires 
in, which is what I was going to look for. The expires in flag here says that, you know, we can have this cache key in the database, but after five minutes or an hour or 24 hours, we can expire it so that we regenerate this. And so we could say expires in, um, we'll do something like one dot minute so that when we refresh this, it updates because that's a new cache key. You will see that the, basically this SHA or the hash here has changed. So it used to be E0941 or start with that, but now it is 4FB26. And that key has changed because we passed in different options here. So it knows that it's a different cache that we're looking for. So that old one is gonna stay in memcache database until that is full. And then it sees, hey, you haven't accessed this in forever. Let's just get rid of it. Um, so when we add more caching stuff, these will stay in there. This will expire after a minute. Um, and we will just have that uh, in there for a minute at a time. So we can keep refreshing until it is past a minute and this will eventually switch up to that and we'll be good to go. But that's about it for memcached. It's very simple to install. There we go. Uh, 814 now instead of 714. But basically memcached is uh, as simple as just install it, connect to it and you're good to go. Um, it is a great little service. You don't have to configure much. There's plenty of configuration options for it, but if you're looking for a cache service um, that's you know separate from your Redis service that you might be using for Sidekick, this is a great option. And that's all there is to it. You just install the Dolly gem. Um, you can check out the Rails docs for caching for all the other options, but that is really all there is to it. So um, I will, Commit this and push it up to GitHub so you can check it out if you would like, but that is um, an introduction to using Memcached with Rails. So that's it for this episode. If you'd like to see more caching things, um, let us know in the comments below and we will see you in the next episode. Peace.